Make a towel, monk. So I wanted to talk today a little bit about the last fiancé I had, number four. And if you haven't listened to the other videos, I basically had a shitty childhood. I really wanted a family. I really wanted kids. And so I, I wasn't so much simping or white knighting. I was a pretty strong alpha and successful, worked really hard, and I was in good shape. I was fairly attractive, and I f just felt like I got shit on by women, and a lot of that may have been living in California, being trapped in Silicon Valley, or it may have just been me, I don't know, but it, um, it took a lot of work to get to encounter a woman for a date, to build that to a relationship, and then finally to have something actually work and get serious. And so there's so much invested by the time you fall in love and think, oh, this is the one. We're doing something special. And usually, usually I would know quite quickly. And I think we had been going out about, about a year, I'd say. And gave her the ring. Uh, I never go down on my knee. I have too much pride for that. But um, yeah, I said, um, you know, let's get married. Let's have a good life together. Things are working out. And she said yes. She put the ring on. The ring was too big. So she asked that I keep it until we got a little closer. And we continued to date. And then we entered this period of I would call it wooing, where you know, I was still nervous about the wedding, and she was from China, so I had to go all the way back to China to meet her parents. Uh, but before that, we, we traveled Europe. We saw all the castles and all the Roman ruins and all over different countries, and it, it was quite expensive. Europe is not cheap, and we would stay in four- and five-star hotels, and eat out at great restaurants, and I was spending a small fortune on this, but it was worth it. I wanted us to be having a good time. I wanted us to feel good together. And then also, while we weren't traveling, we were staying in her teeny apartment and somehow cooking pretty good dinners on a little one-burner stove and um, having like a kind of simple life. I was in my mid-30s at the time. And I had had three bad experiences. One was a very formal fiancé. The other two I would call fiancés. And after all of that, each time I'd have to take a huge break, not want to get involved with women for quite a while. And after my first fiancé, I was very suicidal at the breakup. The breakup made no sense whatsoever. And I'll leave that for another story. The first one had broken my heart really bad, probably because I was quite young, in my mid-twenties, and the next two didn't help, so I was cautious, and I was going to take quite a while with this engagement and go slow, and um, ended up taking another two years of getting to know each other really well, spending a lot of time t living together, and then finally, everything was on track. She had come to my home in California and spent some time there, and I showed her around, and we had a great time. And she actually reflected back a weird comment I don't quite understand, which was, oh, during my visit to you, I I would have married you then, which was really odd because she had already agreed to be engaged, and a ring was exchanged, and... Like, did she not know how it all worked? What the fuck? So, I thought that was an odd comment. You you piece together things much later, and you look back on it, and you realize you're dealing with a, kind of a mental case. Uh, but regardless, so, everything had gone good. And finally, it was like, okay, I'm going to shell out the big bucks. I'm going to go all the way, see her uh, family, her parents, off in China, she kept talking about wanting to do the wedding in China, which was crazy. I didn't have any family at all, though, so I guess that made some sense. And like 
my first fiance, she made the point, well, we can't start off by saying we're engaged. You've got to meet them first and, you know, this and that. So I was like, okay, okay. You know, I don't want to like cause them a heart attack. So you have to understand a bit about her story. She, she had a shitty father, not a shitty father. She had a normal father who, when the wife got old, started fooling around with the secretary and um, got caught, uh, got divorced and ran off to another European country, let's say far away. And he was apparently kind of a shit of a guy and would only show up every couple of years or so and then ask for money and treat the wife like he was still, like they were still married, you know, bitch slap her around and have him get cooked clean for and all of that and um, this was even still with um, having another wife and kid in another country so he was kind of a shit to do that and um, he had treated my fiance pretty crappily as a kid not giving her any affection and I really kind of despised the person so what ended up happening is I first we toured all over China and that was amazing and I really enjoyed seeing the different culture which I wouldn't have survived without a guide and then we finally got to their city and I'll never forget that um, the family lived like 80 steps up you know like 10 12 flights up it was crazy there's no elevator so we got up there and obviously you don't go up and down the stairs very often certainly not older people she had other she had a maid that would bring up groceries I don't doubt her mom ever left the apartment so the other thing was the apartment had like no decorations on the wall it had like one shitty fluorescent light stick and they never bothered or cared to update it it was really weird um anyway so we're there and the whole place is falling apart so i just started fixing everything like little things like oh the door won't shut I went to take a shower. There's no water coming out. I was like, what? There's no water. I was like, oh, I got to fix that. So I fixed that. And then, um, um, and like, the, oh, the stove like was sputtering. And I was like, so I adjusted the jet or so it's like, I had all these little handyman things to fix. And her family was amazed that I knew how to do all these things. I was like, you gotta be kidding. Like, you know, one thing about the communists is they're a bit childlike. They're all in like delayed ch children because they've had this state kind of taking care of them. So when you experience like an American can-do attitude, you're like, yeah, that's pretty cool. So oh, she was, I would say she was, she wasn't the most beautiful, but she was pretty enough. And she was pretty cute. She had really long hair. Um, she had a really impish little smile and sparkling eyes and... Um, we weren't allowed to sleep in the same room in China, but she, of course, snuck over and we fooled around a bit. Um, and basically, her whole family loved me. Like, they really just embraced me immediately as uh, one of their own. And I was like, oh, this is great. I get a family. I'm so happy. Like, I've never had a family in my whole life, pretty much. And uh, even though it was completely weird and... I, I'm i pretty good with languages. My Chinese was coming along, and I, I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, so everything went well, except apparently someone notified the father in another country when she was coming home for a visit. Not necessarily that I would be there, but that she was going to be there. And he actually flew over, uh, made this huge trip, to be there and to see her. Well, he didn't know I was going to be there, and he was horrifically racist against Westerners. And so one night I'm sleeping, and she comes running into the room, and I guess she had been up until, I don't know, 5 a.m. talking with her evil father. And she's crying, and I was like, well, what, what's going on? And she's like, well, my father's refused the marriage. I was like, What? I was like, well, he's a real shit. I mean, you don't have to listen to what he says. He isn't even part of the family anymore. And she just kept crying and crying. Well, what I didn't realize was um, apparently what he says matters quite a bit, even though he was a shit and had left the family. So what happened is she didn't really 
break up. She just... We both went back to our respective cities and different countries, and she started banging other people, which I didn't know about at the time. Um, started banging one of my best friends, starting him <laughs> down the path, lured with her. And um, she came for a one-week visit, and um, she was all tearful, and uh, I said something like, uh, well why don't you just go back to Europe and we'll never talk to each other again? And she cried and cried and cried. I didn't realize she was crying because it was true. That was exactly what she was going to do. And so she actually left without breaking up, but then she got back to Europe and called me and broke up over the phone, which I thought was ridiculous. And um, one of the things that was really odd was she insisted that we were never engaged. And this is one thing I notice about women. They rewrite history. They have, they're basically all sociopaths. And they'll basically completely alter reality to make themselves the good person. And I've seen this over and over again. It's shocking. It's shocking to see. So, long story short, she, um, she gets pushed on another person. They quickly got married, she went back, started having the conventional life, and then she killed herself. So I was fairly upset, and I thought, well, I'm going to kill myself also. And it took it took a lot of effort not to kill myself i there were several attempts and i was miserable for a good year and i had lingering misery for four or five years and i probably wouldn't have survived if if I'd been a little more diligent on my efforts to die, I, I'm sure I wouldn't have survived. So I thought about it, and I just said, look, I love women, I love sex with women, I have a big heart, I always fall in love with at least one of them, and I fall deeply in love, I get very attached, and then they fuck me over. And... I sort of reached my limit. I I knew I knew if it happened again, I was not going to survive it. I, I just knew. I I just I told myself, if you go and do this once more, there's gonna be nothing you know, holding the gun away from your head anymore that it's not gonna happen. So I said, Well, I want to live and I know I have my limits. I know I just have too big a heart. And I'm too honest and I'm too good to people. I'm not just being self-aggrandizing there. I am. And I get taken for a schnook. And I get played. And I get abused. And I said, okay, well, that's it. I have... Women are basically too dangerous for my life to continue with them. And I said, okay. And we didn't have MGTOW then, and we didn't have MGTOW monks then, but that's when I became a MGTOW monk. And then after that, when I looked at women, I just saw pain. I saw conniving. I saw lies. I saw cheaters. I saw children. I saw little demons. I saw, you know, women banging everybody left and right with no loyalty. I saw men getting divorced. And I said, enough. I'll focus on myself, my own growth, my own advancement, my own peace. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. And good luck if you are a fellow MGTOW monk. <laughs>